Good morning. Good morning. Cottonwood family, Facebook family, all our family and friends that are tuning in to Facebook Live this morning. Uh, it's once again that the Lord has allowed us to be able to come, uh, come to you again and, and offer worship and praise in His holy word. Uh, welcome to Cottonwood Baptist Church. Uh, my name is uh, Sister Jamie Cook. Um, and as most of you know by now, Pastor Nick Daniel Cook has been called home to glory. And I just ask that you will continue to keep our family and our church family lifted up in prayer. Amen. Amen. Um, he's feeling no more pain, so he is in the arms of the Lord. So we just want to thank God and give him glory for everything that he has done. And this morning we're going to come to you with um, worship and praise and God's word. We have our guest minister, once again, Minister Dijon Scott from the Pleasant Valley Missionary Baptist Church, where uh, Cornelius Bass is the pastor. We just want to thank God for another day and for allowing him to come and share with us one more time. Um, and without further ado, uh, this morning we have uh, Deacon Kenneth Mack, who, who is our one of our deacons here at Cottonwood, and he has uh, an announcement to make before we get started with our services. Amen. Amen. God bless. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. This is addressed to all of the members of Cottonwood Baptist Church. As everyone has undoubtedly heard, our own pastor, Nathaniel Cook III, has departed this earthly life to join our God in heaven. On behalf of the deacons, clergy, and staff, I would like to extend our heartfelt condolences to Sister Jamie Cook, Sister Kashina Gardner, and the pastor's entire family. We want Sister Cook to know that their Cottonwood Church family is here to support them in this time of bereavement in whatever capacity needed to the very best of our ability. And further, we the deacons want to assure the congregation of Cottonwood that we will be working diligently to ensure the continuation of Sunday church services without interruption. We think it fitting and proper to observe a period of mourning to allow us all, individually and collectively, to process the passing of our leader. Then, and only then, will we take on the task of seeking out a candidate for the office of pastor of this church. May God bless and keep the Cook family in his loving hands, and may he bless and keep us all. And I pray that we will enjoy the service to follow this morning. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. And thank you, Deacon Mack. Thank you, Cottonwood family. Thank you to all our family and friends for all of your prayers, your love, your concern, your support that you have shown our family. Uh, it's going to be hard, but we know together we're going to get through this with God's help. And just continue to love one another the way that God wants us to love each other. Amen. Amen. And you all know that Pastor loved to preach God's word, but he also loved to praise the Lord. Yes, he did. And so one of the things that we're going to do this morning, we're just going to try our best to praise the Lord and give him all the glory and all the honor. Because God shows that he is God. Amen. And we don't control anything. Amen. We all wanted him to be here, but God knew what was best. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to start this morning with a little bit of old school. You know how I like to do that. <laughs> so we're going to have a little bit of, uh, we woke up this morning with our minds. Right, yeah. Stay on Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs>
about uh, to uh, Lady Cook. We thank God for such a precious gift that God has blessed her with. Uh, we thank God for the late uh, honorable pastor uh, Nathaniel Cook as we uh, give the family our condolences and I ask that you will keep uh, the family and the church in your prayers. To my pastor, uh, Pastor Cornelius Bass at the Pleasant Valley Baptist Church, I give God honor and praise for him. Uh, to uh, the deacon of the hour, I thank God for you, uh, Deacon uh, Matt. Deacon Matt, God bless you, Deacon Matt. We thank you God too. for you. Uh, to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is indeed a great day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, yeah. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. Pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior. This fight is spiritual. The Bible declares that 
The flesh and the spirit are constantly at war. And so as quiet as it's kept, but there's a war going on this morning. Somebody, somebody have to fight all week long just to keep your mind right. Somebody have to fight all week long just to hold yourself together. So somebody have to fight your flesh this morning to get up because of the spirit is always winning, but the flesh is weak. This is this is a fight. This is a fight. I want to tell somebody on today. Uh, yeah, you are up under attack uh, because the reason being is because God is taking you somewhere. Uh, God is taking you to higher heights, and the only reason the devil the, uh, that the devil is after you is because God has invested greatness on the inside of you. I want to tell somebody today that the enemy knew who you were before you knew who you were. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, uh, listen. We have to understand that uh, the devil will always try to set up a trick. He, he will always try to uh, set up a plot when you're uh, about to get to where God wants you to be. Uh, let me tell you, beloved, the attack may not always. Uh, seem beneficial, uh, but for, for we know that all things work together for the good. Uh, listen, listen, God's turning around. I want to tell somebody on today, stay in the fight because God is turning it around for your good. Somebody, somebody ought to just thank God on today for just sticking with me through the mountaintop. God, I just want to thank you for sticking with me in the valley. God, I you on today for being God and God all by yourself. Y'all come on and walk with me. I know I'm starting high here, but I'm glad on this morning that through it all I've learned how to lean and depend on Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody ought to just thank God because when everybody else forsook you, he was there. Yeah, when folk turned their backs on you, God was there. When they talked down on you, uh, God was there. Does anybody just want to thank God this morning for being there? Yeah, yeah, for being there. This is, this is a fight. This is a fight. This is a fight. Uh, this is a fight. I don't like to get into politics, but as we look into our country, as we look on the news, we understand that America is in a fight. Uh, this is a fight, but we understand, beloved, uh, as the scripture tells us, uh, uh, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, yes. uh, but mighty through God from the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Uh, we, uh, yeah, in your life or in our land, we have to fast and we have to pray. Yes. Uh, listen, the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us, in order for some things to turn around, and changing our life. He says, this cop comes by fasting and praying. Uh, some of you remember, some of you may not remember. Uh, I had to look it up myself because I'm young. Uh, but in 1979, there was a man by the name of Muhammad Ali. Yes. And uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, 1979, Muhammad Ali, he had a fight with uh, George Foreman. And, and I believe... Deacon Mack, they call this fight uh -huh, the rumble in the jungle. Uh -huh. So I'm trying to get somebody to understand uh, that I be in this fight. He used what they call, if, I, if I'm correct, the rope a dope. He used the rope a dope where he stayed, he stayed on the ropes and, and he let George Foreman beat him up all the way, I believe, to the eighth round. Right. They were wondering what's wrong with our leader. Uh, 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 float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, I believe. But he let George Foreman beat him up himself. all the way to the eighth round, and then Ali comes off the ropes with a two piece system yeah, yeah, yeah. and got George Foreman and knocked him out. And what I'm trying to get somebody to understand is that Ali understood, he watched film and he understood uh -huh, that George Foreman got tired after a certain round. Yeah. And so he understood that that was his time to attack. I'm talking about this is. This is a fight. This is a fight. And see, our problem, beloved, we try to fight the devil with no status. 
and try to fight the devil with those strategies. You're not going to win this fight uh -huh, with human reason. No. If you're not going to win this fight, uh, cussing somebody out. That's not how you're going to get it. You, you're not going to win this fight uh, putting somebody's business all on uh, face page, face, Facebook. Facebook. You're not going to win this fight putting somebody's business out on Instagram. The Bible tells us, Jesus tells us, in order to win this fight, we must understand that you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But Paul says in verse 11, he says here that we're wrestling against the devil yeah. and he has tricks. Uh, and so he tells us to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Well, Reverend, what are the wiles of the devil? The wiles of the devil are simply of the tricks of the devil. Yeah. The second Corinthians says, lest Satan should get uh, an advantage over us. Uh, for, we're, for we're not ignorant of his devices. See, the devil, let me tell you, beloved, the devil has been using the same tricks and the same tactics. That's why you keep repeating and having the same problems because you haven't took the time to learn his tricks. You haven't took the time to understand how to battle against him. Yeah, yeah. Paul tells us we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But Paul tells us in the scripture, in verse 12, he uh, goes on to say that we're wrestling against principalities. We're wrestling in this hour in our nation, in our homes, against uh, spiritual wickedness, against uh, the rulers of darkness yeah. of this world. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He said we're wrestling against demons. Mm -hmm. And if you ever, if you understand, demons have ranking. They, they are very territorial. And once they have a possession over a certain territory, uh -huh, uh, they don't want to give it up. Now, let me say, yeah. and, and so when you decide, I'm going to fix this area of my life, that goes wrong. Yeah. Uh, because they're very territorial. And once you decide uh, that I'm going to uh, stop, start going to the church, I'm going to start paying my time, that's when all hell seems to break loose. Uh, yeah, this, this is spiritual fight. This, this fight, this fight is spiritual. Uh, yes, but listen, I want to tell somebody today uh, that all this stuff that you've been going through, it's just a spiritual battle. Yeah. It's just a fight because I'm told in, in my Bible that God will never put more on you than you can bear. Keep on, keep on fighting, keep on fighting. And I want to encourage somebody that the best way to fight Grandma used to say, was down on your knees. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. I want to tell you before I come to a close, God didn't call you in this hour uh, uh, for it to be comfortable. No. Yeah, what God is calling you uh, to do in this hour, you're going to have to walk in with faith. We we'll have to walk in it by faith, and, and, but but we're, we're so quick, uh, Deacon Mac, to give God excuses uh, why we can't do a thing. We're talking about, well, I gotta wait till I get a degree. Uh, well, I, I gotta wait till I save up more money. I, I gotta wait till I have more support. God didn't call me for that, which is comfortable. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Listen, listen. What God is about to do in your life, it doesn't look like. Uh, it didn't look like it was going to work out. No. It, it, it didn't look like you were going to win the fight. But, yeah. but when, when God does a thing, he, his intentions are to embarrass the enemy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. You, you thought you wasn't going to win this fight, but I want to tell you that you're going to win this fight with bad friends. You're going to win this fight with no husband, no wife. You, you're going to win this fight with no family support because if God it's more than the whole world against you. Uh -huh. Before I come to a close, well, the text says in Revelations, you can read it when you have time. Revelations uh, 3 and 14, uh, the text says uh, that, that when the Spirit of the Lord was speaking to the church, the first thing the Spirit of the Lord uh, says to the church in clause B, he says, Amen. This is in Revelation 3 and 14. The text starts off with an Amen. Now, an Amen is usually at the end 
end of a sentence. Uh, we were raised to believe you only said amen at the end of your prayer. Uh, the revelation starts off with amen. Amen means that it is so. Amen means that it's already done. Amen means that it's on the way. But here John the Revelator starts out with amen in the beginning of the sentence. And like I told you, you only say amen when it's finished. Oh Lord, I wish I had somebody out there crazy enough to have faith to believe and say amen to whatever you're dealing with. That means it's so. Amen to my situation. Amen to my problem. Because it's going to be over. It's going to be over. It's going to be over. Every generational curse, it's going to be over. Every, all the drama in your family, it's going to be over. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, yes, he says, uh, he says, I'm trying to figure the church out because we've been under satanic bondage. Uh, yeah, we've been torn between being hot or cold. Uh -huh. Some of us got our hands lifted while others of us have our hands folded. Uh -huh. uh, but there's power in agreement. This is, this is a fight. This is a fight. And somebody ought to say on today, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Listen, listen, God is saying there's no, there's no more time to be riding the fish. God is wanting to know in this hour, I need to know if you with me or against me. I, I want you to uh, be hot or cold. Uh, yeah, God says there's no lukewarm, there's no in between. Listen, God says, I want you to be hot or cold. Listen, I want somebody to understand, somebody to testify to the fact that I've been through too much not to win this fight. I have to lose too much not to win this. I experience too much not to win this fight. Listen, I wish there was a worshiper. I wish there was a praiser out there. Uh, that because God said, if you're not out of cold, he says, I will spew you out of my mouth. And I wish somebody would just thank God for the simple fact that you, your, your, your name is in the mouth of God. Listen, I'm not hollering about the house and the car that's on the way here. I'm hollering because I, that's confirmation that I am on the mouth and the mind and the heart of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, listen, the bank is about to know your name. The school is about to know your name. The property is about to know your name. I want to tell somebody today that there is a name above all names. Uh -huh. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall Uh huh. At the name of Jesus, every tongue must confess. Uh huh. I wish I had somebody out there that can testify that can't nobody uh, do me like Jesus. Can't nobody uh, do me like the Lord. Have I got a witness in him? I tried calling on my name, but that didn't work. I tried calling on my mother's name, but that didn't work either. I tried calling on my daddy's name, but that didn't work. Uh -huh. But when I call on the name of Jesus, oh Lord, demons begin to tremble at that name. Because I want to tell you that there's power, wonder working power in that name. Yeah, keep on holding on. I want to encourage you to keep on.
lift up uh, the Cottonwood Baptist Church. Uh, continue to lift up uh, Pastor, Pastor Nathaniel Cook uh, and his family. Yes, and we just give God praise and glory. We pray that it was something that was said or done that touched your hearts on today. Yes, uh, that just gave you a little bit more fight. And yes, we pray uh, that you never uh, don't get discouraged in times like these, for we know uh, that all things are working together for mm -hmm. our good. Most holy and righteous God, we thank you once more again for this day. God, we thank you for your blood. And Father, we pray, God, that you will continue to watch over us. Continue to keep us, God, from all hurt, harm, and danger. And Father, as we go forth with our week, God, we pray for supernatural strength, supernatural stamina, God, to keep our best foot forward. Uh, for we know in you, God, there's no failure. We know in you that all things are possible. And God, we just say that we love you and we'll praise you for forevermore. As we leave this place, never leave thy presence. We ask that the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit will rest rule and abide with us all, now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen.